Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to demonstrate simulation of a dual active bridge converter in MATLAB Simulink. In case you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to it so that you'll be getting the videos that we post regularly. Alright, let's get into our topic for today. So this is the MATLAB model of a dual active bridge converter. So it's basically a DC to DC converter. So what is happening in this particular circuit? You have a DC source. It's converted to AC by using an inverter. This AC voltage is increased or decreased using a transformer and it is given to a rectifier section consequently AC is converted to DC and you have a capacitor in order to filter the DC output voltage so you're ba basically getting DC to DC but why do we need such a big configuration so it's very simple you have a transformer by suitably selecting turns ratio you, you can increase or decrease the voltage secondly the transformer provides electrical isolation between the input side and the output side if there is any damage with the respect to the load consequently it does not affect the source terminals as a result this is one of the most uh, advantageous features that this type of circuit has and uh, one of the other uh, reasons of having such a circuit is because it is popularly used in vehicle to grid and grid to vehicle applications where it is used as a battery charging section and in case you want an AC supply you can directly take the tapping from the inverter section isn't it so it basically provides multiple opportunities to use the nature of supply both DC and AC as a result we'll be popularly using these type of circuits once we understood the basic requirement of a dual active bridge converter let's go to MATLAB and start our simulation over there. Here we are in MATLAB Simulink. So click on Simulink Library Browser and search for PowerQ. So MATLAB has this extraordinary feature where we can search for the components that we want in Library Browser. So add PowerQ block. This is basically the comp compiler with respect to the circuit. So if you don't have this, then the simulation will not run. It will be throwing you an error. We'll be requiring a voltage source as well. So search for voltage, so voltage measurements or you can directly take the voltage measurement block from this point. Once this is done, we'll be requiring a DC voltage source. So search for DC voltage source and choose the ones that are there in black. Don't choose the ones that are there in blue because they are used for signals and systems digital signal processing applications. So choose the ones that are there in black. It's not that uh, these are not used for power electronic applications, but these are not widely used because these are physical systems. So once that is done, once we add a DC voltage source, we'll be requiring a MOSFET. So search for MOSFET and you'll be getting it right at the bottom. Choose the ones that are there in black and we need a pulse generator block in order to trigger these uh, MOSFETs. Search for MOSFETs and choose the one that is there right at the top. Once this is also done, we'll be requiring a linear transformer. So search for linear transformer and you'll be getting it over here. Add this block as well. We will be uh, requiring a series RLC branch. So search for series RLC. Later on, we'll be converting this to capacitor and uh, resistor block respectively. We'll be requiring a scope as well in order to see the nature of output waveform that we're getting. So add that block as well. So we have added all the blocks that we want with respect to our circuit. So I'll be placing these components in appropriate positions so that we can start off with our circuit connection. So at the first place, rotate this by pressing Ctrl R. Double click on this and disable the measurement port. We don't use measurement port in this case. Um, so it, it can work without disabling them as well. But I want to avoid uh, other confusions with respect to it. So once this is done, We'll be connecting drain to source, drain to source in this particular fashion, drain to drain and source to source. So be very careful with the direction of the connection of the MOSFET. If the drain and source is in the opposite direction, if you connect the MOSFET in the upward direction again, you will be getting some error and you will not be getting the right output. Once this is done, double click on the transformer and select it to be in SI units. I'll be entering uh, the nominal power to be 1000 watts and I'll be entering the frequency here to be equal to 2000 Hertz. So once this is done, I'll be entering this value to be equal to 10 volt. So I'll be basically giving a 10 volt DC supply. So I'm entering 10 volt that will be available at the output based on the inverter operation. And uh, this 10 volt will consequently be stepped up to 100 volt. So control C, control V over here, and I'm going to give it as 100. The reason why I'm making uh, the resistor and inductor 00, 0 is because I don't want additional drops caused at this point. However, there will be drops cost because of of the magnetization resistance and inductance but I want to try to avoid uh, the resistance and inductance drop in the primary and secondary side of the transformer. So once this is done disable three winding transformer because we only need a two winding transformer and we'll be connecting it in this particular fashion. Once this is done 
we will be requiring thyristor blocks so search for thyristor so we can use a thyristor mosfet igbt all of them based on your requirement anything will work in this particular case but i'm using a thyristor because thyristors are popularly used as rectifiers isn't it so that is the reason so double click like you can rotate this uh, thyristor in this particular direction and i'll be copy pasting uh, this before copy pasting it disable the measurement block as i told earlier with respect to mosfets control c control v control c and control v again so this basically forms a bridge so i'll be connecting uh, a cathode and anode at this point i'll be connecting anode together i'll be connecting cathode together i'll be giving it to the ac supply like this is the ac source that we're going to get and i'm giving it between these two points so once this is done we'll be using a resistive load so change it to resistor over here and enter the value of resistance to be equal to 1000 ohms so uh, you can go on with a uh, design procedure as well i have uh, done videos separately with respect to inverters and rectifiers with design so you can uh, refer to those videos in order to understand how to design these type of circuits so the capacitance that i'll be choosing is 1000 micro henry it's a very high value i understand that but uh, we want to ensure that we will be getting a constant dc output voltage so once that is done i will be connecting the capacitor between these two points and a resistor between these two points in this particular fashion and uh, we will be giving it to a scope so we will be measuring the output voltage again by using a voltage measurement block at this point and i'll be giving it to a scope in this particular fashion so once that is done i'll be giving it to scope and um, i will be requiring another scope uh, at this point as well so take the tapping that you're getting at this point so that you can check what is the AC voltage you're getting and nature of output waveform at this point in case you would like to check it. So once this is done, almost all the values are entered except the DC voltage source and the pulse generator block. So we'll be entering the pulse generator block values. So how do we trigger them? I'll be triggering these two switches together and I'll be giving some delay and triggering these two switches together. So that basically operates as an inverter. Again, I'll be giving the same pulse generator block to these two thyristors and these two thyristors. Based on natural commutations, the other two thyristors will be turned off as AC supply is used. So I'll be connecting this to this I'll be connecting this to this. I'll be uh, entering the values with respect to the pulse generator block. The time period that I'll be choosing is 1 by 1000 and the pulse width is to be 50%. So that is, the switch should be on for 50% of the cycle and off for 50% of the cycle. Once that is done, I'll, I'll not be giving phase relay now. I'll be copy pasting this pulse generator block. I'll be giving phase relay now such that uh, the phase relay is 1 by 2000. This is because exactly half of the time period, this is half of the time period. After that, the other two switches should start conducting so there will be phase relay between the first two switches and the second switches consequently you will be getting an ac voltage so this operation of inverter is explained in detail in case you would like to understand it from the scratch please to watch one of my previous videos so once this is done i'll be connecting uh, these two gate terminals again and uh, i'll be connecting these two terminals gate terminals again between the same points in this particular fashion so be very careful while connecting them because uh, there are multiple points where tappings are taken as a result you have to be very 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 careful with respect to connecting so once this is done we have entered all the parameters with respect to our circuit so we can uh, change the simulation time to one second and click on run because these are static loads in case you're using a motor then give a uh, 10 seconds because there will be transients so double click on the scope in order to see the output waveform so if you observe here we are getting a stable output voltage waveform of about you're getting a dc voltage and uh, you're getting it approximately to be equal to 95 volt so the linear transformer has some drop that is because of magnetization resistance and inductance as a result you're not getting exactly 100 volt so that is the reason there uh, is some deviation so if you double click on this particular scope block and you can see the nature of output waveform you should be getting an ac signal so you're getting an ac waveform at this point if you carefully observe and the voltage is again approximately close to 100 how do you say it's an ac although it's a square wave you have positive and negative peaks and they are continuous in nature throughout so that is why it's an ac signal and consequently if you observe here it is having only positive and it is 95 constant almost 95 constant at this point and you're getting dc so you're basically getting dc to dc and it is achieved by using this type of a circuit you can take tappings from this point and connect it to various other appliances with respect to the circuit that you need so I hope the simulation of a dual active bridge was understood. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below. If you like this video, please do like it, share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates. Thanks for watching this video. Meet you guys in another video. Keep supporting. Thank you.